to versus character card. What's up and welcome to Versus Character Cards, the Versus show without the Versus. In this series, instead of analyzing two fighters to find out who wins in a battle to the death, we are only covering one character at a time, researching who they are and what they can do. Kinda like a respect thread in video form, or a versus cheat sheet, as you could use the research in this video as a base for your research in your own versus show. Pretty neat, huh? And don't forget to stick around to the very end so you can see who we are covering next. But today, we have Finn the Human from Adventure Time. And honestly, what is there to say? You know who this is, the rescuer of princesses, the successor to Billy the Great Hero, and the ultimate Hero of Ooh. Finn and his brother slash best friend Jake the Dog are always ready to go on adventures and vanquish evil, protecting each and every kingdom from dark ones who wish to destroy it. This is gonna be a good one. Finn didn't have such a happy beginning. From the start, he was already lost and abandoned as a baby. But things picked up pretty quick when he was taken in by Joshua and Margaret, two daring dog adventurers. It was with them that Finn met his brother and lifelong best friend, Jake the Dog. The two grew up together, moved into a treehouse, and spent all their days adventuring. As Finn grew up though, some tough questions he wanted the answers to began to appear. Was he really the last human? And if not, where'd his parents go? Why'd they abandon him? All these questions would be answered though in time, as Finn just continued to go on adventures, going on much bigger quests, facing larger and more dangerous foes. He remained a true hero and went into everything with a heart of gold until his very last breath. And even after his last breath. Of course though, we'll get into that later. For now, let's check out what guns Finn is packing. Or in this case, swords. There's of course his iconic golden sword, which he uses throughout most of his adventures. Then his red sword that belonged to his father, that's powered by demon blood. Then there's his Grass Sword. This is a cursed blade that binds itself to Finn and even has a mind of its own. It can mold over Finn's arm, grow to an extreme size, and enhance his strength. It can also detach itself from Finn, but in exchange it'll take one of his arms. That's not too bad of a downside though, because Finn can actually fuse the detached Grass Blade with his Finn Sword, a weapon that allows him to talk to a parallel dream self for strategies and other stuff. These two swords when fused will create an all new sentient being called Fern, complete with a grass sword of his own. He's pretty much identical to Finn in every single way, except he's made of grass. The only downside being that he gets a bit backstabby and betray -y if he stays out too long. So maybe Finn shouldn't rely on him too much and only bring him out as a last resort. It's okay though, Finn has other ways to make up for a lost arm, like his robotic replacement arm, complete with a rock drill, a fan, and a weed whacker. It even has a fatality mode to instantly go for the finish. Don't worry though, Finn doesn't rely on these weapons or anything. In fact, his own body is pretty much a weapon in its own right. He's several times faster and several times stronger than the average person, and he can even just ignore magic spells thanks to his righteous heart. He once reversed a transformation spell because he wanted to kiss Princess Bubblegum so bad. <laughs> but sure, Mordecai's the biggest simp. <clears throat> Anyways, Finn also has an extreme pain tolerance. He can take all kinds of insane beatings and just keep going. He even survived having his head dipped in lava without even complaining about it. If he does need an extra line of defense though, he could always call on his brother Jake to become the Jake suit. Jake is packed to the brim with all kinds of interesting stretchy powers. He can extend to extreme lengths, grow to extreme size, and even shapeshift into weapons for Finn to use. Or he could also shrink down and plant himself in your nervous system taking full control of your body, like a pseudo possession or something. Jake is definitely his own character though, not a Finn accessory, so unless you're doing a 2v2, he counts as outside help and shouldn't be used. He should scale to Finn's stats though, so why don't we take a look at those. Going back to my comment earlier about not downplaying Finn just because he's a human, Finn is absurdly strong despite how he appears to be. Like the time he lifted this gigantic monster over his head with little to no effort and then threw it behind him. Or how he's able to consistently kick the patoot of the Ice King who can fly to space in a matter of seconds. The different ends of this feat can range between Mach 20 to Mach 2000, depending on how far out Ice King went. But Finn has dodged plenty of electrical and lightning based attacks before, so it's pretty safe to assume that it's closer to the Mach 2000 side at Massively Hypersonic. There's a couple debatable laser feats in Adventure Time too, so I don't think settling for Massively Hypersonic Finn is too greedy. 
it's not his speed you have to worry about anyways, it's Finn's strength, because believe it or not, he actually has some pretty casual planet level stuff. Once again, there's consistently defeating the Ice King, whose weaker alternate timeline self was still powerful enough to freeze the entire planet for centuries. Then there's the Lich King, who is definitely superior to Ice King and views him as a weak fool. Finn has kicked him around several times. Then there's Hunts and Abadir, Marceline's father, who stated in a guidebook that the Lich is his equal. Also has been clobbered once or twice by Finn. Same with Orgolorg. But if you need a bit more physical consistency rather than a ton of statements, there's also the Flame Princess. As it turns out, if Finn smooches Flame Princess, her fire will grow so hot and intense that it'll burn the entire planet from the inside out. And Finn takes this blast to the face before immediately getting back up to stop her. Believe it or not though, Finn goes way higher. Spoilers for the new special together again if you haven't seen it. In this special, Finn is able to defeat foes and even survive beatings from foes who are able to destroy entire dead worlds, reducing them to empty black voids. Dead worlds are basically pocket dimensions souls get assigned to based on their deeds or mindset in the mortal realm. Now don't get too excited, pocket dimension doesn't automatically equal universal or anything. Some pocket dimensions could be as small as a house, it all depends on context. And in Adventure Time's case, one of these dead worlds actually had its own sun. This is the dead world that Tree Trunks was in, and considering we see her get reassigned to another one later on, it means her dead world was one of the ones that was destroyed. And since Finn can defeat the foes who destroyed the dead worlds, he should scale. Star level Finn, everyone! Now there's one detail about this that you're probably thinking would prevent Finn from getting this star level upgrade, and it's the fact that Finn is dead. This all happens after Finn dies. Can all this star level stuff really scale to his previous living mortal body? And the answer is, yes. Oddly enough, this special just happens to go out of its way to specifically explain how Finn still has his fleshy mortal body, and that you don't really become a soul or spirit thing until you get assigned for a dead world or are waiting in the reincarnation line. They even double down on this and emphasize it with the fact that Finn still can't interact with beings on the astral plane without any special weapons or objects. So, yeah, despite all this crazy star level stuff not happening until after Finn dies, it should still apply to his mortal living self. Not bad for just a human, huh? <laughs> Good reason. Time for the conclusion segment. In conclusion, Finn is really strong. I know star level sounds pretty insane for a character that's just a human, but look at all the other regular humans in fiction. Krillin, Saitama, Bayonetta, all the wild stuff they can do. Just because Finn's a wacky, noodle-armed cartoon doesn't mean the same rules wouldn't apply. Him being a regular human shouldn't hold any negative weight on his strength. The same goes for his massively hypersonic speeds. Now, being star level but only massively hypersonic does make coming up with matchups a bit tricky because mostly star level characters are able to blow past faster than light speeds no problem. So sadly, I can't come up with any good fights for Finn off the top of my head at the moment. But if you have any ideas, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. Along with what you think of my analysis on Finn's strength. But with all of that said, let's see who's next. Next time on Versus Character Cards, it's... Jack and Daxter!